This is a review of tonight's uh, MNBRT radio show. Uh, it was the conclusion of Authors Month with uh, <coughs> A. Bill Rio and Evie. Unfortunately, we didn't hear much of Evie during the show. She uh, had a bit of some had some problems uh, with her connection, but uh, Abe was there and live and in full effect. And uh, the guest was Jody Cook. Uh, Jody is the author, I should say, the co-author of a book titled. Encounters with the Grass Man. Um, no, it's Bigfoot Encounters in Ohio, Quest for the Grass Man. And also author of the book uh, Traces of the Grass Man. He's got an upcoming uh, Bigfoot uh, field manual, which is coming out uh, sometime this summer. I believe May 1st, he said, is coming out. Yeah, that's exactly what he said. He said it was coming out May 1st. So this new book is coming out soon. Uh, Jody talked about his research. He talked about um, some of the things he has encountered in the state of Ohio. He talked about his um, his um, collection of a baboon skull. Now, when I say baboon skull, I mean an actual skull of a baboon that was found in the state of Ohio. And uh, this was shown to Dr. Esteban Sarmiento, and he determined that's what it was. Well, I mean, he, Jody already knew what it was. Uh, apparently, there are in Ohio, you can keep a, uh, a a baboon for a pet. There's exotic pets laws, things like that in Ohio. And uh, he also, he also talked about the uh, the sighting, the supposed sighting he had in 2009. I was actually there when that happened at Salt Fork State Park, um, which uh, Jody said it, it ran pretty fast, but uh, to him, it, it didn't really ring true. And uh, when I called in, when I called into the show, I asked him, I said, do you think that could have been the New Zealand guys fooling around? When I say the New Zealand guys, I mean the uh, Lee Hart and his Mysterious Planet crew. They might have had a suit and they were goofing off. And uh, Jody said that's entirely possible. That could have been the that could have been the case. And uh, I also, um, what else did I ask? I think I asked about. Uh, oh, I asked Ken Gerhard how Lee Hales was doing. Lee Hales is um, had to have bypass surgery, and I think he'll be okay. Um, but anyhow, the, um, what happened was, um, he talked about, uh, also, he has an upcoming, um, he has an upcoming, uh, venture that he's doing with Ken Gerhard. Ken Gerhard was on the show also in the, in the second hour. It's a, um, it's, it's a, uh, like a, it's called Cryptid Seekers. Cryptid Seekers, and they're actually doing, uh, things where they're teaching people how to seek out cryptids, cryptozoological creatures, things of that nature. And, um, Jody has, is, is going to have a website, co cooperative website with, uh, Ken Gerhard. As far as their uh, project is concerned, um, Jody also gave some behind-the-scenes um, exclusives uh, from his time on Monster Quest when he spoke on Monster Quest, or when he appeared on Monster Quest, I should say. And uh, he discussed that uh, you know some of the things that that were that were seen on television didn't quite make the final, or di didn't quite, uh, there were some things that were not seen that didn't make the final cut for the show. But, uh, anyway, uh, it was a fascinating show. I really enjoyed it. It was a great show, of course, always five stars. Don't know what Abe has planned for next, uh, Sunday, or next Monday, rather, but it'll begin at, uh, 9 Eastern, 8 Central, www.blogtalkradio.com slash MNBRT. Then this Sunday, Nightcallers will have uh, Christopher Knoll on 
at 7 Eastern, 6 Central, www.blogtalkradio.com slash nightcallers. I'm not sure what they have going for Bigfoot tonight, but I'll find out and I'll let you guys know. But as always, with all the blog talk shows, we do encourage you to please tune in and support great research. This is another video, um, a slight, a slightly abbreviated review of Raw. I only saw a little bit of it, maybe the last, maybe 40 minutes of it. I saw where um, Jack Swagger was facing Jerry the King Lawler in a match, and uh, Michael Cole, who has apparently this this chamber that he sits in, this um, I guess bulletproof chamber or whatever. He was taunting uh, Jerry the King Lawler. Apparently Lawler cannot touch Michael Cole before WrestleMania because uh, because um, they ha they have a match at WrestleMania Sunday and um, apparently Michael Cole was te was 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 uh, was taunting uh, Jerry the King Lawler and threw a drink on him or something like that. I think it was water. And, and Lawler was very tempted to, 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 to do bodily harm to Michael Cole, but uh, which I would have loved to have seen. <laughs> but, because uh, I don't like Michael Cole one bit. I, don't, I do not like him. He's, he, he's a horrible commentator. And um, I just, I'm, I'm not a big, I'm not a Cole fan, believe me. I like Jack Swagger. I don't like Michael Cole. I like Jack Swagger. He's a good wrestler. He was the world heavyweight champion last year. And he's got a bright future in the business. Of course, he's also a former ECW champion also. Um, and then I saw where this, this terrible segment with Snooki. I don't like Snooki. I don't like Snooki. I don't like Jersey Shore. This this Snooky person who was drinking, and she was with Trish Stratus, and Lay Cool comes up and tries to sneak attack them, and, it's and they're fighting with Snooky and Trish. Eventually, they were separated because there's going to be a match at WrestleMania with uh, Snooky, John Morrison, and I think Trish Stratus against Lay Cool and uh, Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler, former. World Heavyweight Champion, very briefly, and also a former Intercontinental Champion. Uh, Dolph Ziggler and John Morrison are both very talented wrestlers. Uh, Lay Cool, I'm not too crazy about. I don't like Snooki. Trish is cool. Uh, Trish is a former Divas Champion, Women's Champion. And uh, she really, she's, she's really great uh, as, as far as her work in the ring. And then finally, they had a segment with The Rock and John Cena and The Miz. Rock came out first and cut a promo on John Cena. Then Cena came out cut a promo on The Rock. Asking, you know, what's your problem with me? Rock didn't really basically answer him. Rock, the Rock, Rock was ready to go against Cena. But then The Miz comes out with A-Rye. And uh, challenges The Rock. The Rock starts uh, laying the smack down on The Miz. And first on A-Rai. A-Rai, that's Alex Riley. That's The Miz's uh, assistant. And then he puts the, uh, puts the DDT on The Miz. And then puts the people's elbow on him. Uh, and then, let's see. I believe The Miz escaped from the ring. And uh, The Rock turns around and gets the attitude adjustment, or the Arn Anderson, as uh, S. Serpent 21 calls it, from uh, John Cena. And Cena left The Rock laying. And this, could this possibly set up something between Cena and The Rock in the future? It would be great to see that. It would be great to see The Rock back in the ring, back in a WWE ring. But the highlight of the night, the highlight of the night was... Seeing that indeed it is, it has, it is true. The Road Warriors, the Legion of Doom, have been confirmed to be inducted this Saturday night into the WWE Hall of Fame. But the good, but the best news is they're being inducted along with Precious Paul Ellering, and that's a good thing.
because there were rumors that it would only be the Road Warriors that would be inducted without Ellering. But WWE was very, fortunately, they, they were very smart to include Ellering in the induction ceremony. And they had a pretty lengthy uh, video package on the Road Warriors. And it was, it was awesome. It was great. Some of the great moments that they've had in uh, the different organizations that they've wrestled in. WCW, AWA, NWA, Japan, the old World Wrestling Federation. And I tell you what, it's just going to be great. I'm, I'm sure that it'll be Animal and Paul Ellering that will be accepting the uh, the award, or accepting the induction, because uh, Hawk is no longer with us, unfortunately. That's Michael Hegstrand. But Joe Laurinaitis, that's Animal, and Precious Paul Ellering, I imagine, will accept on behalf of the Legion of Doom, the Road Warriors. So, they are the final inductees to be announced for the WWE Hall of Fame. And I am glad that they are putting Ellering in there along with the Road Warriors. Because, basically, it, he was the brains behind, this, behind, the whole, um, behind the whole operation. He, he was the, the guy using the $5 words and carrying the Wall Street Journal. and Very intellectual. Very, very, very intellectual. Um, much like, much like he was the managerial equivalent of, of Nick Bockwinkle. And um, yeah, it's great to see him being inducted along with the Road Warriors because I don't think it would be, uh, I don't think it would be fair to leave him out, to leave him out of the equation. So that's a great thing, and then the, uh, the the Hall of Fame ceremony actually takes place Saturday, but it won't be shown until next Monday night at 8 Eastern, 7 Central in USA, before that night's live, live Raw. There's going to be about four hours of, of wrestling on that night. There's going to be the, the WWE Hall of Fame induction ceremonies, then the two-hour Raw, then the premiere of WWE Tough Enough, is going to be at not at, at, after Raw, whenever Raw goes off the air. That'll be sometime after 11 Eastern, 10 Central. So, um, that's basically the situation of what's going on with WWE. <clears throat> and I just thought I'd give you guys an update. Um, so, as far as the Hall of Fame ceremony, the ones that are being inducted are... Shawn Michaels, HBK, um, uh, Bullet Bob Armstrong, Abdullah the Butcher, Sonny, Tammy Lynn Sitch, uh, Drew Carey, of all people, and the Legion of Doom, the Road Warriors. I, I may have mentioned Abdullah the Butcher. I think I did. But yeah, the, those are the inductees into the WWE Hall of Fame for this year. So, we'll, we'll talk to you guys later. Take care.